Hey. Hey, hi. Welcome to the Natasha and Debbie show. Hello. That's brutal. Just, just two patriotic girls. So please don't take us the wrong way. Hi, everybody. Hi. Feels like a long time no see other than the, our live video that we did yesterday. Yeah, it has been. It's been a, it's been a minute um, for sure. Um, again, if you haven't um, seen our live video from yesterday, go back and uh, take a look at that. Um, there's been some sad, very sad news in our life. And uh, we shared a lot of that with you guys via live videos. And uh, you go back and take a look. This is our first video back since that. Um, and that being our, our beautiful little girl, Jazz, our dog of 14 years has passed away. And um, it's been hard to come back. Um, but we, we discussed it and uh, you know, getting back into some sort of a routine of things that, that you know, uplift us um, is what we need right now. Get back into learning. Yeah. So, um Please like the video and consider subscribing to the channel. Um, but as always, before you subscribe, yeah. go back and check out our other videos. Make sure you like us and you want to join our family. Mm -hmm. And um, subscribe. Yes. You right. guys have been so great to us, so kind, so uh, giving, and just being able to be there and for, for us to lean on you when we needed to. Mm -hmm. That was great. Yeah, it's still great because <laughs> I'm still leaning on you. Yes. Um, and we got Tyson. Up here, we're upstairs. We're gonna be upstairs um, as long as we have our boy. Uh, he's having a rough time with everything going on, of course. So uh, he's right there, laying down, watching us, and maybe falling asleep. <laughs> so what we're gonna do today, um, in honor of the week? Yes, it's it's Christmas week. So Merry Christmas. Mm -hmm. So um, we were told about um, this advert from 1914. Um, I think it was a Sans Sansbury, I think. I don't know if I'm saying that right. And it was about World War One, which I don't know about you, and we didn't pre-discuss this, but that's the one where I know the least about. Yeah, I don't know much. Yeah, I know more about World War Two than any war. And then I would say maybe the Civil War and then Vietnam War. <laughs> yeah. Um, I know you know a lot about Civil War stuff. And then we're talking about American Civil War. Um, <clears throat> so I don't know much about it, um, but we haven't checked the ad out, except I saw it was only three and a half minutes long. And that seems a bit short for a video. So instead, um, I did come across this kind of by accident today. It's um, World War One Christmas Truce, Silent Night. And um, this is a true story that I don't think about, don't know anything about. Oh, true story. I love that. Yeah. And um, heard it was uplifting. That's really all that we know about it. Yeah. Uplifting is something we need right now. Absolutely. Um, for sure. So let's get into this. And uh, again, if you guys haven't um, checked out our previous videos, go back and take a look. And... Um, Let's find out. World War One Christmas Truce Silent Night. All right, here we go. Make sure the volume's up first. Christmas Eve, 1914. The war was supposed to be over by now. This little holiday special is brought to you by World of Tanks. Use the invite code ARMISTICE if you're a new player who wants to check out the game. Sure. The Christmas Truce is one of the most poignant events of the First World War, a time when men rose up above the madness of the conflict and, for just a moment, saw each other as fellow humans. This is an event that definitely did happen. Thousands of men laid down arms in the truce, but a century of retellings has also kind of sanded down its rough edges and oversimplified its messy reality. Indeed, this event wasn't just the result of pure human spirit and holiday cheer. It was a host of unique factors that drove these enemies to spontaneously declare peace in no man's land. And really, it may not have been all that spontaneous. Small armistices were happening every day. As frontline troops became accustomed to the rhythms of trench warfare, they learned that looking the other way now and then could bring a shred of safety and calm to their lives. The armies ate meals at the same time, which became a daily ceasefire. Patrols frequently ignored each other, adopting a live-and-let-live live attitude. Troops often shouted to each other across the lines. After all, the autumn battles had passed, and both sides were waiting out the winter. In reality, the weather was the primary enemy for both sides. The high water table at Flanders meant that the trenches were always filling with water, sometimes collapsing and burying men inside. Soldiers leaned against the walls to sleep, trying to keep themselves out of the wet. Food supplies had to be hung up on dugout ceilings. 
and that winter had been particularly miserable. Weeks of rain flooded the dugouts. The mud pulled men down like quicksand. Now, British Field Marshal Sir John French had noticed the hands-off attitude his men were developing towards the enemy, and so he ordered attacks in late December to boost morale, and this resulted in heavy British losses. Concerned about possible fraternization over the holiday, he issued orders that no unofficial armistice would be tolerated. Morale was much better over in the German trenches. After all, they were winning. But many men were also experiencing their first holiday away from home. Knowing that this would be difficult, commanders brought Christmas to the trenches, shipping thousands of presents to the field. Each man received a gift from the Kaiser. Cigar boxes for NCOs, a pipe with the crown prince on it for the ranks. The British, for their part, received a brass box from Princess Mary filled with cigarettes, tobacco, a Christmas card, and sweets. And then there were personal packages. Enterprises sprang up on the home front, offering family members a chance to send gift boxes to the troops. British soldiers received plum puddings and thousand-count boxes of cigarettes. Wow. German and Austrian troops were bombarded with chocolate and salami and cognac. Both sides received winter clothing. In truth, though, the gifts were kind of a nuisance. I mean, there was nowhere to put it all. Soldiers didn't have a place to store a thousand- I wouldn't have thought that they were allowed to get stuff on the front line. Like yeah, that. I know. I mean, I was thinking that. gosh, what horrible conditions. Being in the trenches filled with mud and water. And well, just, just the cold, too, there. and on top of that, like... I, I just couldn't imagine having to live like that and fight like that. I'm sleeping against the wall. Christmas. Yeah, sleeping against yeah. the wall, like, worrying if that's going to crash and right. kill you while you're sleeping against yeah. it. Just... Where's the uplifting part? Um, <laughs> Hopefully it's coming. Because I'm depressed right now. Uh, I mean, I hate war in general. Who doesn't hate war, right? right. <laughs> I shouldn't say. <laughs> I'm not leaving that open for discussion, but I'm just saying I hate it. But just, um, yeah, World War II, I mean, wasn't much different in that regard, I would no. say. You know, trenches and things like that. Um, but, uh yeah, I am. I what you said. I agree. I just didn't expect gifts, mm -hmm. um, but probably for some, the last time they ever got a gift. Sadly, yeah. and I respect to all of these people. Anyone that served. Yeah, all respect to all soldiers. But seriously. Yes. I don't know how to do that. Just play. <laughs> got it. Thousand extra cigarettes. But that Christmas Eve, well, hang on, let's didn't that a little bit. the gifts were kind of a nuisance. I mean, there was nowhere to put it all. Soldiers didn't have a place to store a thousand extra <laughs> cigarettes. <laughs> but that Christmas Eve delivered a true gift. The rain stopped, and the trenches oh. drained. Dry awesome. cold froze the mud into a hard surface, almost like a floor. <laughs> Snow dusted the countryside. That afternoon, the gunfire dwindled, and in some sectors it stopped entirely. The weather just seemed too nice for it. The Germans, stuffed with Christmas chocolate and cheered by the weather, started putting lit Tannenbaum up on their trench parapets. Wow. And then, the German line started singing. Over on the British parapets, watchmen of the Scots Guard saw lines of lights along the enemy trench. At first, they suspected an attack, but then they heard an ethereal sound drifting across no man's land. Stille Nacht, Heilige Nacht, Silent the night. original Austrian version of Silent Night. Sensing wow. a challenge, Guards Officer Lieutenant Sir Edward Hulse decided that they should drown this out with their own carol. The sides went back and forth, <laughs> but soon the competition merged into a harmony of Good Aww. King Wenceslas and Old Lang Syne. The men began shouting Christmas greetings across the line, Aww. jokingly at first. So a few even stepped out to talk. Pulse didn't know it, but the same thing was happening up and down the entire wow. British line. Agreements formed. In some sectors, the officers met at the wire and shook hands, agreeing Whoa. to cease nice. hostilities the next day. In wow. other areas, the ranks took the lead. Germans shouting across no man's land, English, tomorrow if you no shoot, we no shoot. At times, wow. it was just one brave soul walking into no man's land, waving a newspaper. Wow. These overtures were extremely dangerous. Though yeah. peace was breaking out in certain areas, it didn't happen everywhere. One British regiment responded to German caroling with a machine gun blast. Some unarmed soldiers were gunned down trying to broker this holiday armistice. But in most sectors, the ceasefire held. 
This truce mostly happened between German and British units. The French and the Belgians, whose countries were under German occupation, were less inclined. There were agreements to bury the dead and cease hostilities, but not as much fraternization. Yet a Bavarian unit held fire during a French mass, and both sides halted fighting long oh, enough wow. for a guest, a soloist from the Paris Opera, to make a performance. What British Indian that? troops, who were a bit unfamiliar with this whole Christmas deal, saw the lit German trees and thought of their own holiday of Diwali. Oh. They held fire, but also held position, until some Germans tempted them out of the trenches with cigars and wow. cigarettes. Soon the men were smoking together on the parapet. That Christmas night, the troops slept in sublime quiet. Wow. Christmas Day dawned, bright and cold, the sky clear for the first time in weeks. To their shock, British troops looked across no man's land to see the Germans walking around on their parapets. Such a thing was suicidal wow. in daylight, and that gesture of trust, more than anything, lured a few British out. It was heaven to at last stand up straight and walk on solid earth. Some had ventured into no man's land on Christmas Eve, but in daylight it was impossible to ignore the bodies lying between the trenches. The two sides buried their dead in common really? graves, grieving side by side in joint services, awesome. listening to the faraway sounds of battle from other sectors. Mm, sorry. That's amazing. That, that, that just absolutely astonishes me that they could at least come to a truce for a little bit. Just um, gives a whole new meaning in a way. Um, it's a silent night. Yeah, it does. I'm sorry. It just that's just incredibly moving. It definitely is. To be out there fighting and then to have this. And then bury each other's people together and um Yeah. I'm too bad they had to do that at all. <clears throat> right. <sighs> and to do all that and then to do it on Christmas. That's that's, yeah. that's so touching. Ah, uh, I didn't expect this. <laughs> what a beautiful Christmas Eve. That would have been I mean, unfortunately, not for everybody, obviously, but, um, wow. Side by side in joint services, listening to the faraway sounds of battle from other sectors. And that shared experience broke down the wall. Soldiers milled about together in no man's land, swapping over abundant gifts from home. British beef for uniform buttons, chocolate mm. cake for barrels of beer. Sweet. They exchanged hats. One oh. German barber gave haircuts. The men chatted. After all, they shared so much in common. They lived in the same fields under the same rain, and they were equally sick of war. Besides, they were curious. What was life like on the other side? Yeah. Who were these enemies? One British officer was perplexed to learn that his new German friend believed the armies of the Kaiser fought for freedom. That was impossible, the officer responded. We're fighting for freedom. Oh, come Amid on. this, Lieutenant Hulse found himself talking to... Oh my gosh, that just gets me in the heart. Yeah. To take a minute and find out that... You're fighting for the same thing, but you're you, fighting. You think you're fighting for the same thing. Different sides, but the same thing. Yeah. And that in the end, we're all just people. We're all really the same. They share each other's hats. Like, to, to, I mean, that's such a huge deal. Yeah, it is. Wow. It's amazing. But like I said, I don't know much about World War One in respect to the other wars. Um, uh, I, know, I definitely know the most about World War Two, but I know that that the war didn't end at this time period. Mm. So I know that this didn't end the war, and that is like kind of breaking my heart too. Um, that sorry, just that's <sighs> me getting my headset stuck in my watch. I just, wow. Wow. And the barber giving a haircut. Yeah. But the whole, like, fighting for fr freedom, and we're fighting for freedom. Mm -hmm. This is uh, a lot. <laughs> um, and it's a good, it's a good thing, you know, obviously, but there's still some, it's very bittersweet, obviously. <laughs> yes. <sighs> Curious how many of you know, knew about this. Um, I did not.
we're fighting for freedom. Amid this, Lieutenant Hulse found himself <coughs> talking to Lieutenant Thomas of the 15th Westphalians, who had something to pass on. A Victoria Cross and a packet of letters. An English officer had died in the German trench during the last attack. Perhaps he could give these to the man's family? Oh. Touched, Hulse removed his own silk scarf, a gift from home, and presented it in thanks. Oh, Thomas, right. embarrassed that he had nothing to give in return, sent a soldier to fetch the fur gloves that his family had sent. Up and down the line, men started bringing out footballs. Kickabouts broke out, with men from both sides chasing the ball among Seriously? shell holes and sliding wow. on the frozen ground. In one sector, a group of Highlanders challenged a Saxon regiment, who burst out laughing whenever a kilt flew up during play. <laughs> but not all of this activity was goodwill. No, stop, before they say something negative. <laughs> because I'm like, it's like this is amazing. Uh, it's incredible. I can't imagine, like, first of all, how they know to bring a football? <laughs> like, where did yeah, that come from? One, but, where did that come from? You know. But that's just... How could you go back to it? I guess the generals and... You have to. Why do you have to? I, this is just the part of me, the part of humanity that bothers me. You know, I'm not the only part. But war, in general, is one of the worst things in history. And I, I, I understand sometimes why they do it. I, you know, I'm mm -hmm. saying stupid things right now because I'm just really emotional about this. But it just makes me sad that it couldn't have just ended. It couldn't have just ended. You know, this would yeah. have been like... Everybody just turn and walk away and be like, not fighting anymore. Yeah. Go home. Yeah, to care what anyone orders us to do. We're just going to... We see each other yeah. as people, and that's what they're doing. And that's so important and relevant right now. Yeah, but I guess back then, I mean, <sighs> if you turn and walk away, they would have shot you for turning and walk away. You're, oh, yeah. You're absolutely right. But I'm just saying, it's just so relevant to the way it is now. They were literally killing each other. Mm -hmm. And yet they still just came together and I just, oh my gosh, like our world just, if only it could just be, there's always something gets in the way of that. Yeah. You know? Let's just stop and see each other for people. Yeah. <sighs> now they're going to say something negative. <laughs> In one sector, a group of Highlanders challenged a Saxon regiment, who burst out laughing whenever a kilt <laughs> flew up during play. But not all of this activity was goodwill. On both sides, a few used the gatherings to reconnoiter enemy trenches, and both sides used the time to repair dugouts. Of course, for some, this fraternization appeared false. One British soldier flashed his squad mate a hidden dagger, while another refused to smoke German cigarettes, fearing that they might be poisoned. Mm. When one squad of Bavarians discussed whether to meet the British, their corporal snapped at them. Such a thing should not happen in wartime. Have you no German sense of honor left at all? They weren't surprised. The night before, the same soldier had refused to join the unit's Christmas service. Corporal Hitler was odd like that. Stop but it. But his disapproval reflected <sighs> the general's view. I'm sorry, but... <laughs> that was... Corporal Hitler was odd like that. Was that really Hitler? I mean, I know he was in, I know he was in World War II. I didn't know he was a corporal. Corporal... I can't say the darn word. Where's your phone at? Was he really a corporal? Is it close? That can't be. Because I feel like I would have heard about that. I mean... Nuh-uh. He was Lance Corporal. Okay. Is that tr is that really true? I mean, this sounds accurate, but... I thought it was a joke at first. That's why I was laughing. Like, Corporal... Really? Well, that's not shocking, is it? Let's rewind that five seconds. Corporal Hitler was odd like that, <coughs> but his disapproval reflected the general's view. This was exactly the situation that Field Marshal French had feared. Commanders dispatched senior officers to threaten disciplinary action and insist that the men restart the war. In some sectors, the armistice came to an orderly close. Officers from both sides saluted and fired revolvers into the air, signaling mm. that, all right, the war was back on. In a few places, troops resisted until nearly to New Year's Eve. But the generals would not have it. See? German command dispatched snipers to break the ceasefire. French ordered an artillery barrage, letting the machinery of war roll over the human connections of the frontline troops. Nothing like this Christmas truce would happen again. Yeah. The generals wouldn't allow it. On Christmas Eve 1915, British officers ordered a 24-hour artillery barrage. Men who tried to form a truce were court-martialed. Machine guns wow. drowned out German carols. 
But the generals needn't have bothered. The spirit of that truce was unique to 1914, a symptom of a young war. By Christmas 1915, those troops had experienced chlorine gas and creeping bombardments. Zeppelins were bombing London. The Battle of Verdun would end just before the holiday, leaving 750,000 casualties. Wow. Indeed, many of the men who celebrated in no man's land that day would never see another Christmas. One of those unlucky ones was Lieutenant Sir Edward Hulse, who had sung carols oh, no. and given a German officer his silk scarf. He died three months later while oh, trying on. to save a wounded comrade. He was 25. Oh. And yet, Hulse is not remembered today for his military achievements, or even the book of letters that his friends published after his death. He and so many others are remembered for a victory entirely their own, when a group of brave men ventured into the line of fire, trusting their enemies not to shoot, and believing that humanity was better than the bonfire it had built for itself. Amen. Happy holidays, everybody. Oh, wow. How nice. Not what I expected. Um, all the feels. <laughs> I'd love to be remembered for that. I know. Yeah, absolutely. Forget my award. I say I remember him from all of this stuff he did, but at the same time, yeah, that's yeah. just... But that's a huge thing to be remembered for. Oh, wow. Those men. I just absolutely, like, salute them. I wish they hanging in their memory, at least. And, um... Mm -hmm. Wow. Now that's a Christmas miracle right there, is what that is. That is. That is just, it just shows too that, you know, we love each other. We want to love each other. We want to look past each other's differences and see their similarities. Mm -hmm. And um, it, it's just incredibly uplifting. It, it's also, like I said, incredibly depressing too, because it doesn't, I, I just wish it had ended the war. Um, that would have been nice. Yeah. But, you know, that's life, I guess. Unfortunately, it is. Um, but what a wonderful story. What a wonderful Christmas Eve, Christmas Day mm -hmm. um, for those for those brave men. Yeah. They they deserve that at least, at the very least. Yeah, just to have a little bit of peace. Here and cigarettes and clothing. Yeah, just and their own gifts from each other's Pictures. families. Yeah. Oh, wow. This is wow. That's incredible. That was a good yeah, that, touching story for That Christmas. was a touching story. Um very much so, and uh, I'm glad that this was brought to our attention. Now we have to go watch that ad, advert about this. Yeah, go watch the ad. Go watch next. the advert. Um, <clears throat> as soon as we're finished with this video, actually, we'll go watch it. And hopefully that'll inspire everyone. Do something nice. Yeah, go absolutely. out of your way. Do a little act of kindness for somebody. Amen to that. Even if it's a uh, hold a door open for somebody. Yeah. Just do something nice. Yeah, that's that's great. I agree. You um, can afford, afford it, maybe do one of those pay it forward, pay for somebody's meal that's behind you or something. We need to do that. Yeah. Yeah, let's do that. I think that'd be nice. I think that's wonderful. Um, it is the spirit of uh, of giving and the spirit of um, loving. Um, that's right. Hard for me, I know, but this video helps me to kind of like actually look at my uh, issues with Christmas a little bit differently. Mm -hmm. Definitely did. This has moved me very deeply. Um Yeah, I'm glad we watched this. And hopefully everybody can, you know, put differences behind, love each other, and spread some cheer and happiness. Because in the end, we're all just human beings, and we're all just here. We all just want to be loved. We're all trying to get along. Yeah, we all want to be seen, loved, and um, validated, and appreciated, and cared for. Yep. And um, having said that, um, we will see you next on Sunday, hopefully, That's after right. the holidays. Oh, or after Christmas, I should say. Please again, like the video and consider subscribing to the channel. Um, that is, if you'd like to be part of our family. And we really mean that. Yes. When we say family, we, we, we're we 100% mean family. And those That's of you right. that are our subscribers know exactly what we're saying. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so thank you guys for watching us with us. I hope it moved you. Um, if you haven't heard of this before, as much as it moved me, because that trust is. me, I was holding back a lot more tears than I am still right now because it's just such a beautiful moment of humanity yeah that is so touching and and one of the greatest history lessons i've ever seen mm -hmm. by far absolutely um, so thanks for bringing this to our attention we won't see you until after christmas so um please keep us in your prayers with tyson yes. and um we'll keep you in ours and uh we appreciate you guys and uh we'll do something um for the day after so when you wake up the next day uh you'll you'll have these You'll have these faces. <laughs> You'll get to see us. <laughs> Hopefully you want to. <laughs> but thank you so very much for everything. And um, we will see you in a few days. Have a wonderful. I haven't said this in three years. I'm going to say it. I'm oh. going to say this.
And if you don't know why it's hard for me, again, go back and watch my live video on, on why Christmas is hard for me. I'm gonna say this for the first time in three years, and it's it's taken a lot. But um, in the spirit of losing my girl that I love so much and loved love, and uh, in the spirit of these these brave men and women, mm -hmm. I'm gonna say something I haven't said in three years. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Until next time, guys. Bye.